A train is traveling in its day-to-day -day routine, and everyone are also doing their own job. A voice is heard shouting towards them, it's the train driver voice. He is asking everyone to get out of the way. The train's controls have shut down. Everyone is escaping from the train path to save their own life. A small tire has stuck in the train path, it a baby and a mother. Her baby has been stuck. Everyone is asking her to get off the train route, it's too late to save her child now. But a mother cannot leave her child there to die. The train is approaching towards them at full speed. That's when a person appears in front of them, he punches the train. He can derail the train and stop it right there. He asks if she is alright? She says thank you, for save, but before she could complete her sentence, she freaks out. She is shocked seeing his face. His face is covered with bone only, he doesn't have an eye and his teeth also look scary. His name is Zombie, Z-O-M from Zombie, and B-I-E from Zombie. Age. He don't know. When did he die? Not sure either. But he have a dream, a dream to become friends with humans. One day, he won't be discriminated against and ostracized by them. To realize this dream, he has helped countless humans. Once a plane was going to crash in a stadium with its node down, everyone started to run to save their life. That's when the plane stopped in midair, the zombie man has stopped the plane with his pure brute force. Another time, there was a building on fire, there was some children inside the building. He saves all of them too. Originally, he wasn't this strong. Thousand years ago on a summer day, a zombie outbreak caused the apocalypse. He was studying in school at that time, he couldn't escape in time and got bitten. And then he became an ordinary zombie. A complete ordinary zombie like the ones you see in a mob, following the horde wherever it goes. Until one day, humans began to appear and pointed a bunch of guns and missiles at zombies. They were all killed en masses. Not only humans burn zombies for fuel, but they also created a perpetual energy machine by exploiting them. They became human source of electricity. Zombie man decided to change himself, he began training from that day on. He lifted weights, ran, swam, and jumped around every day. He didn't eat meat, and only ate protein powder for three meals a day. Although he was tired, he continued to train even at night. Until one day, he became strong. He was almost invincible. After obtaining both power and knowledge, he decided to live in the budding human society, he continuously helped them to change their perception of zombies. He wants to live as a civilized, law-abiding, and good zombie. Zombie man opens the fridge, but the food is all gone. He decides to go shopping. He has arrived at E-House supermarket. The shop lady asks him, isn't it uncomfortable to wear that mask all day? He says it isn't at all. He has bought a truck full of goods and they are moving the items onto the truck. There is a journalist, they are observing the zombie man closely. He is determined to take that mask off him one day and see who's under it. Zombie man sees a wanted poster, he sees Go is wanted again. Cameraman asked a journalist, are you sure that's the super person who lifted an entire airplane? Maybe it's just some false information released by the media. Journalist says, that might be true. It should be the media hyping it up. Both of them are surprised, their eyes are going to fall onto ground. They see the zombie man lifting the loaded truck. He then flies toward the sky like a rocket flying to space. Both of them are confused what has happened just now. Zombie men arrives at a restricted area, this place is completely surrounded by zombies. One of zombie child says to its mom, mom I am hungry, she tells him to endure it for a while. The truck has arrived at the location, every zombie is happy that the king is back. One child says, your majesty, why didn't you just drive the truck here as the humans do? He replies, he doesn't have a driver's license. This is a zombie city he has conquered, it's far, far away from the prying eyes of the humans. He has ordered all the zombies here to use eggs to replace the protein they get from eating human flesh. The zombie king then enters to the main hall. There are many boss level zombie whose danger levels are SSS. Everyone gives their greeting to their majesty. He says to go, he is wanted by the humans again. 
Go apologize to his majesty, his body just loses control whenever he sees a human. One of the zombies asks him to just let them go out there and fight it out with them. His chainsaw has begun to rust from not having fresh blood for so long. Zombie King says, they don't know yet how terrifying humans has become. There is a loud sound above them, what's that sound? Ask one zombie. There is an armed helicopter above them. There is a president of the squad. Her co-workers say all the equipment are ready to go and the armed nuclear warhead is set to detonate in 20 minutes. She has a grudge on zombies, and she is here to make zombies have a taste of this. Zombies ask the king to let them go, but king stops them saying they will only lose control the moment they get close to the humans so instead he orders them to evacuate the citizens first. He is going to deal with them himself. There is a guy named Marshall who is on a standby. He is ready to intercept if there is a boss-level zombie appearance. He says to leave at him, President. If a boss zombie shows up he'll cut them down. One of the army members says, the Extraordinary's Academy has found the zombies so B pushes a button. They drop a dozen of people covered in cage in the middle of zombie. They start shooting towards the zombie to kill them all. A girl is furious on one zombie which won't die with their firepower. The zombie king is protecting two children from being killed. Another guy aims a powerful rocket launcher says there's no such thing as an unkillable zombie. He fires the missile toward the zombie king and it hits a target. One member says, it's not a zombie. He is an extraordinary person who has been helping people lately and he is famous for always wearing a zombie mask. He freaks out saying they shot the wrong person. The zombie king is unhurt from that power missile. In the plane, the president has detected an arrival of boss zombie. They inform it to Marshall who is on a standby. He jumps from the plane toward the zombie boss. In the ground, all units are alerted about the boss zombie appearance, and they are heading towards there immediately. The squad leader runs towards the zombie king, he is here to save the life of a zombie king. He carries him away from the zombie and throws him towards their van. They immediately flee from that place towards the boss zombie location. The young girl is curious as to why he always wears that mask. The king zombie is speechless, what can he say to that girl? In the boss zombie location, zombie has lost its control after seeing human. Zombie throws the bus towards the army soldier, they are about to be hit by the bus. The bus is cut in half perfectly, Marshall has appeared just in time to save them. Everyone is happy with his arrival. They are sure they are going to certainly win this fight. Marshall says to evacuate this place and leave this place to him. Zombie King has also arrived in the location, and he has recognized the zombie voice. He leaves the human quietly to go help his zombie. Here, zombie attacks Marshall in rage, but Marshall is able to deal a heap damage using his sword. The zombie has fallen to the ground defeated, Marshall has dealt with it and reports it to the president. He realizes there is another zombie, it's the zombie king. Marshall attacks the zombie king with his sword, he is easily defeated. He is no match for the zombie king. Headquarter detects the life signal of Marshall is almost completely gone. He has suffered critical damage. President is mad hearing this, she jumps from the plane and charge toward the zombie king. She has to see herself how strong he is. She uses a white blade cleave attack to cut through Zombie King, but her sword breaks. She is shocked, what is that bastard made of says President. He apologizes to the President, shocking President. President thinks he must be some kind of mutant or variant. She pulls her another sword, enhanced blade. Zombie Kings don't want to fight but talk, President is not ready to hear anything, and he can go talk to Yama after he dies. Zombie King dodges all her attacks and starts to run away from her. She is frustrated to see him run like this. But she would try to cut him if he doesn't run. She then uses a level 2 form attack and heads towards Zombie King full speed, get behind the Zombie King and attacks him. Zombie King is taken by surprise with this attack so he cannot dodge it. He falls towards the ground. President asks the plane pilot to lower the plane's altitude and pick her up. In the plane, there is a spy. The unknown two persons orders spy to drop the nuke. 
He presses a red button which drops the nuclear warhead toward the city. They caught the spy, and they inform everyone to stop celebrating, the nuke has already been dropped. They were happy a second ago, but they are all terrified seeing their life in danger. President is also shocked hearing this news, the nuke is directly heading towards them, and everyone caught in the attack is going to die soon. President tries to jump toward the plane, but there is an issue, her leg boosters are not working anymore. She had used all the battery to catch up with the Zombie King earlier. Suddenly Zombie King shockingly appears in front of President and grabs her by her cloth. He starts spinning her in the air and throws her towards the sky. He has thrown her directly inside the plane saving her life from the nuclear bomb. Now next thing, he jumps toward the nuke and he catches the nuclear warhead barehanded. Everyone is shocked what's happening there, there is a huge explosion above the city. He has managed to save the city from the heavy explosion even though it still had some impact on the city. The only damage he had received was in its clothes and it made his butt itchy a little. The two person says to head back. This is not the first time they have fought against the Beyonders Academy, and it won't be the last either. They are going to get them next time. Inside the plane, the president has been depressed because of what happened. She has spent her whole life fighting against zombies, only to be saved by one in the end. Her subordinate says there is some misunderstanding, and that guy wasn't a zombie. He is the same masked hero who his famous hand has been living in the city for a while now. Zombie King enters the call booth, he calls his zombie, zombies say there's no need to worry about them and they have got out safely. They are looking for a new place to stay. Zombie King says to find them again when they have reached a place to settle down. Zombie King now heads towards his apartment, also the president team has found the location of him. Zombie King has been training hard in his room, he wonders if his family has settled down and he should go visit them soon. Suddenly president breaks his door room which took Zombie King by shock. President orders his men to take everything from kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom. Take it all with them, she says. Zombie King asks who they are and if they won't stop this. He is going to call the police. President puts a letter in front of him, they are from the Beyonders Academy, and they are here to inform him that he has been accepted into the Academy. From now on, he is a member of their Academy. They catch him, and ready to take him to the academy. He can't go to school, he is a zombie. President says to stop pretending, they know he is a human and orders him man to take him away. The young lady says to president, the academy has strict criteria for recruitment and even if they accept him, he won't have anywhere to stay. President says it's fine and he can stay with her. The boys have started putting zombie king belonging in room. They have done it here completely. Zombie King is sitting in front of President, he asks if he will be staying here in the future, and if he will also be sleeping here. President says why do you ask? Do you want to sleep with me? He says no and he didn't mean anything like that. A zombie sleeping with a human? That's absurd. President says he will be sleeping in the guest bedroom. Zombie King again tries to assure that she must have mistaken, and he is not actually a human. President removes her leg shocking him. He asks what happened to her leg. She had amputated it himself, she says a zombie outbreak occurred in his village when she was still a kid. Her parents became zombies, and they bit her on her legs. She had to cut off her own legs to survive and kill both of her parents who had turned into zombies. She hates zombies and she has vowed to kill every zombie she will ever meet. So, what were you saying, she asks. Zombie King says he hasn't said anything at all. He wants to change the topic and ask her what the Beyonders Academy is. She explains it's an organization that specialized in coming up with ways to fight zombies. It has been 1000 years since the first zombie outbreak occurred, to survive the zombie outbreaks, their ancestors established the Academy two centuries after the first outbreak. The Academy's only purpose is to fight against zombies. Through the years, it has nurtured countless talents to help fight against zombie outbreaks. President says to report to the academy tomorrow as she has already enlisted him through a back channel. Also, if he thinks of running, they will be investigating his motive for trying to run away and punish him. 
She introduces herself as Violet and Dawn will be the one to bring her to the academy tomorrow. She says Zombie King has already met her. Zombie King says he don't know anyone named Dawn. Dawn is standing in front of the academy building. This is the till date latest episode and we will be making new content when new series are out so stay tuned to the channel. Manwa Title, Mr. Zombie In the previous episode, the Zombie King was invited to be Anders Academy by Violet, the president of the Blade Department. The Academy trains students to become high-level soldiers who are experts in killing zombies. The Zombie King had no choice but to join the Human Academy. If you haven't watched the first part of Mr. Zombie, the link will be in the description. At Beyonders Academy, the Zombie King meets a girl named Dawn, who was also recommended by the President. When the Zombie King asks who she is, she becomes angry and reminds him that they had met each other in an armored personnel carrier. The Zombie King remembers her being small back then. She calls him an idiot, but then calms down. The entrance exam for Beyonders Academy is about to start so they head towards the academy. The Zombie King asks if he must take an entrance exam, and Dawn replies that he must. The entrance exam tests both physical abilities and special skills for killing zombies. To pass the entrance exam, they must beat the world record. For example, the world record for the 100-meter sprint is 9.58 seconds, so to pass the exam, one should finish the test in 9.57 seconds. That's what Beyonders means in Beyonders Academy. When the Zombie King and Dawn arrive at the ground, there is a crowd of people. The Zombie King carries Dawn on his head, as she can't see anything from there. He asks if someone must take an entrance exam if he has lifted an entire plane in a human city. She replies that there are plenty of people in the Academy who can lift planes, and everyone here has some sort of secret, and no one watches the news here. The examiner, Chen, the president of the sports department, arrives on the stage. He explains that Beyonders Academy was established 800 years ago, and countless talents have joined and left. When he was explaining how their ancestors could even split entire mountains, the zombie king interrupts him from the crowd. He asks what will happen to a zombie if it is found inside the academy. President Chen replies that they'll tear it limb from limb and hang its corpse by the academy gate for everyone to see they will also neuter it. The Zombie King doesn't know what neuter means, so President Chen replies that it means beheading the little cock. The Zombie King is scared, imagining his cock being cut. The Zombie King and other students get into a ready position for a 100-meter race. When the instructor starts the race, a boy named Wu Chinshu completes the race in three seconds. The Zombie King runs like a normal person and barely completes the race. Next is the shooting, where Dawn is an expert. She can shoot all her targets at once. Feeling trapped with a group of crazy people, the Zombie King makes sure to control his strength so as not to attract attention to himself. President Chen looks at the Zombie King's profile on his tab. President Violet had claimed that the Zombie King was strong, but he only got a passing score in all the tests. President Chen feels that the Zombie King is pretending to be weak. So, in the next test, where a spear arrow should be thrown, President Chen confronts the Zombie King, asking if he is hiding his real strength. Everyone is trying their best to qualify, and no one dares to hold back. So, he asks if the Zombie King is not a person. The Zombie King freaks out, claiming he is human. President Chen demands that he shows his hidden power, otherwise, he would assume the Zombie King used some sort of trick to scam President Violet. If this were the case, President Chen would have to consider him a spy and punish him. The Zombie King is now serious and knows he must show his true strength. Everyone is looking at him after President Chen confronts him. With a serious look on his face, he holds the spear and throws it as hard as he can. The ground breaks and everyone is blown into the air as if a hurricane hit them. The Zombie King's spear reaches the moon, making a big hole in its center, cursing him for making it an asteroid now. Everyone is shocked to see his true strength, and everyone believes he is too strong. Dawn explains that he could become a president. With the authority of a president, one can command any army of troops, tanks, aircraft, long-range cannons, and even have access to nuclear warheads. A president has the highest authority over a city, 
and the mayor is just someone who helps the president manage the city. The zombie king replies that he already has his own city. After qualifying for the entrance exam, they arrive at the biotech department where all Beyonders weapons are made. The professor of the department asks what kind of equipment they need, while Dawn says she needs something that will allow her to easily carry weapons like a pair of trousers that can hide her Gatling gun. The professor asks the zombie king what he needs, and she freaks out when she sees him up close. She is scared to see a zombie, but Dawn claims he is a person who likes wearing a zombie mask for some reason. The professor doesn't believe her and can see that he is clearly a zombie. Don claims to have seen his face when he was doing his throw earlier. The professor calms herself down, saying he would have already attacked her if he were a zombie. She asks the zombie king for his equipment requirements. He doesn't know anything he could ask for, so he instead asks her for a set of clothes that won't rip because whenever he goes out, he somehow always ends up going home naked. Somewhere inside Beyonders Academy, a boy who was defeated by the zombie king explains to the president how he was super strong. When he charged towards the zombie king, his entire vision turned dark, and the very next second, he found himself already hanging on top of the lamppost. The president asks if he is stronger than President Violet, and the boy claims that he is. The president asks for his name, having something on her mind. The boy wishes the zombie king all the best for upcoming trouble. Her name is Zhang Lanchi, and she is the president of the sword department. The competition between the sword and blade departments has been passed down for generations, and both sides would use unscrupulous means to poach people from the other. The competition has gotten so fierce that if the other side has even one more member than their own, they would rather give birth to the extra member themselves than be weaker than their opponent. In a Zombie King class, a professor explains the habits of a zombie and how they have found out zombies love eating eggs besides eating human flesh. The professor is teaching how the students can use zombies' likes to their advantage when setting up traps. Seeing the Zombie King taking notes constantly, Dawn asks what he is doing. The Zombie King replies that he is writing notes so he can share them with his family, making her feel confused. In the middle of class, an announcement was made, and everyone was asked to assemble immediately at the gymnasium. Once everyone had arrived, President Violet appeared and ordered everyone to remain quiet. Zhang, the president of the sword department, was also present. She noticed the zombie king and couldn't tell how strong he was just by looking at him. The guy next to her asked if he should go over and test him, which President Zhang accepted. As they were going to test the zombie king, the door to the gymnasium opened and a man with his bodyguards appeared. He was the chief and everyone bowed their heads towards him. He is also the president of the mechanical lifeform department. The boy asked if they were not going to test the zombie king, but President Zhang said that the chief was more important now and left the zombie king. The chief praised President Violet for her hard work, and the zombie king found their atmosphere to be weird. He wondered if there was something going on between them. The zombie king asked if the chief was powerful, and Don explained that the chief was an evolved version of humans and the only one who survived among thousands of test experiments. She also explained that the city his department controlled had over 50 million people. During his tenure presidency, not a single zombie had appeared in the city he controlled. Even if a single hair of a zombie was found, he would exterminate the entire area until it was sanitized, which scared the zombie king. When the chief reached the stage, he ordered his man to start the projection and showed them a spy they caught a few months ago. It was the same spy who had dropped a nuclear warhead on the zombie king. The chief explained that they should immediately kill the spy, but they had intel that he was a close subordinate of the traitor, Professor Jamie, who had ordered the spy to drop the nuclear warhead. The zombie king realized that the original target was not the zombies, and all the conflicts were because of fighting among themselves. Some people just wanted to watch the world burn. The chief explained how they had tried countless methods to get the spy to talk but nothing had worked till now. None of their methods could make him talk, so the chief was asking everyone in the gymnasium to help them make him talk about the whereabouts of Professor Jamie. He offered anyone who could make the spy talk to make them a vice president. Everyone was motivated to get a chance to become a vice president, and everyone was ready to try. After two hours of fruitless efforts, the freshmen began to turn desperate. At first, the methods were more normal, but they slowly turned much more unorthodox. 
Everyone tried everything that came to their mind. Don asked the zombie king's opinion if he could make him talk. The zombie king replied that he could even make the spy sing, shocking Don once more. She called the chief, saying that her friend had a way, and the chief gave him a try. Don knew the zombie king liked to keep a low profile, but he suddenly stepped out, confusing her. The zombie king thought about his subordinates being very obedient to him, but they had started to randomly lose control for some reason, and maybe the spy could explain it. He entered the room where the spy was being held, and the spy told him to give up, as he was not going to betray his brother. The spy also said that there was no use sending someone like him there. The zombie king cut his hand and the spy laughed, telling him to use more strength if that's all he can do. Unbeknownst to the spy, the zombie king had transplanted a virus inside him that took control of his brain and made him follow his commands. The zombie king ordered the spy to stand up, and he complied, shocking the president, Don, and even the chief. They were amazed and shocked at his ability to control people's minds. The zombie king asked the spy his name, and he replied Shao Kai. The zombie king asked if he knew most things about Professor Jamie, and he replied that he did. The zombie king then asked why zombies were going berserk, and the spy revealed that they had dropped a medicine created by his brother onto the city. If zombies ate the medicine, they would go crazy, and they could even control them to a certain extent. They used zombies to attack humans and collect data on the Beyonders Academy. When the zombie king asked why they were doing this, the spy replied that he didn't know, but his brother said he was doing something great. His only role was to gather data on the members of Beyonders Academy. With further interrogation, they discovered that Professor Jamie was in a secret base about 500 meters below H-City. The zombie king ordered the spy to turn around and revealed that he had placed a virus inside his brain. He could trigger it to make him commit suicide. Meanwhile, inside Professor Jamie's lab, they had already received intel about the spy's confession regarding their position. Professor Jamie instructed them to continue their work, and he wanted them to come looking for him since his experiments were almost over. He was experimenting on the birth of a completely new life form. When the zombie king came out of the room, everyone feared him. They were chattering about his power to control people's minds. The chief praised him for his amazing hidden talent and took him to get him registered as a vice president. The president of the sword department and his subordinate found it weird as they didn't remember there being any registration process to become a vice president, so they decided to follow them. The chief took the zombie king to an abandoned industrial area, and the zombie king asked if this was the place he would be taking over. The chief asked the zombie king when he learned to speak human language. The zombie king asked if the chief was talking to him, and the chief replied by shooting a laser weapon towards him from his hand. The chief could blow the zombie king's head, and the president barely managed to dodge the chief's attack. President Zhang recognized the chief's tachyon cannon attack that could disintegrate all matter. The chief had known the truth about the zombie king from the beginning and successfully blasted his head off. Once a zombie loses its head, it loses all ability to move. In a flask, the zombie king countered the chief, and with great speed, he pushed him, pinning him to the wall. The chief's bodyguards attacked the zombie king, but they were no match for him, and he disintegrated them in a second. The chief managed to escape from the zombie king, unable to believe how he was still able to move without his head. President Zhang and his subordinate also saw the zombie king without his head, shocking them both. The zombie king attacked the chief, but he managed to dodge and counterattack with his cannon. The zombie king also managed to dodge his attack, and the chief wondered how he was still so fast without his head. President Zhang said that the chief was about to get serious, and men like him like to show off with big, flashy moves. They decided they should move a bit further away. The zombie king shocked everyone by regenerating his head. He wanted to talk and didn't want to hurt the chief. The chief thought that the zombie king wanted to control his mind too, so he removed his clothes and called his model one. He equipped himself with the robot armor since he was a mechanical life form and didn't want to talk to the zombie. The chief attacked the zombie king, claiming that the zombie king was the first zombie to witness this form and he should feel honored. He punched the zombie king, sending him flying in the sky, and attacked him in midair. The zombie king received a lot of beating in the air, and the chief finally threw a powerful punch that made the zombie king hit the ground hard. 
The chief then used his powerful attack, which was more powerful than before, to disintegrate the zombie king into dust. The chief believed that the attack should have killed the zombie king, but he couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the zombie king walking without taking any damage. The zombie king was also furious with the chief after what he had done. His hair had grown back, and he had completely changed personality. The zombie king that wanted to talk was now going to rip the chief apart. The sky was starting to be covered with clouds, and a tornado started appearing in the sky. Everyone could see something was wrong with the sky but wasn't sure why. President Zhang was scared, and she could feel the tension in the air. In a scary tone, the zombie king asked the chief how he wanted to die. He had given him enough chances to settle this peacefully with a talk. Seeing his personality take a 180-degree turn, everyone had started to get afraid of him. The chief said he had never felt threatened by anyone and challenged the zombie king to try. President Zhang started to leave the site immediately. They had never seen a zombie like the zombie king. When they were escaping, they barely managed to dodge the chief flying towards them with his limbs and legs torn apart. The chief called Model 2, 3, and 4 for reinforcement, but they were instantly disintegrated by the zombie king. President Zhang and the chief were caught in the blast and landed on a rooftop. The chief asked President Zhang for help to kill the zombie king, but President Zhang scolded him for provoking him in the first place. All they could do now was split up and run. The zombie king was still not satisfied and wouldn't let them run away. President Zhang saw the zombie king about to do something and wondered what he was planning. The zombie king attacked the ground, and the ground started to move up in the air, stopping everyone from escaping. The zombie king had split the city in half, upside down. Everyone was shocked, and no one knew what had happened as they could only see the city floating in the air. The zombie king ran towards the chief and caught him by his face, slamming him into the ground. The zombie king asked if he felt threatened now in his hand. Remembering what the chief had said earlier about controlling the mind of a robot, the zombie king said he was part of a human, so he did have a human brain. He injected the virus into the chief's brain and read his mind. The chief's parents died, and he became an orphan at a young age. He underwent body modification until almost no part of his body was human. The zombie king claims chief to be miserable and feels more like an undead than a zombie. For him, staying alive is more painful than dying. His mood is ruined as he watches his past and he lets the chief fall from the sky, but President Zhang barely manages to catch him, saving his life. After the incident, he heads to his academy room, scared that he lost control of his emotions again and how scary becoming like that is. He tells himself that he is a good and kind zombie, hurriedly packing his clothes and saying goodbye to humans as he exits the room. President Violet appears behind him, asking where he was going. The zombie king doesn't want to silence a witness but apologizes and runs towards her to attack, but stops after seeing a paper. These are papers promoting him to the position of vice president, and from today, he is officially a vice president of the Beyonders Academy, shocking himself. He asks President Violet if it's really the chief's signature on it, and if he didn't say anything. President Violet says that it is the chief's signature and that the chief said he was a very good human. In the hospital bed, President Zhang is shocked when he finds out that the chief had promoted the zombie king to vice president, even though he knows that the zombie king is a zombie. The chief says it was never about whether he was a zombie or a human, but he needs the zombie king's strength if he wants to catch Professor Jamie. President Zhang asks what will happen if the zombie king goes berserk again, but in his opinion, there is nothing they can do about it. The chief asks if President Zhang has made all the arrangements, and she replies that she has. The chief thinks that this time, he will erase all traces of Professor Jamie for good. In the zombie hideout, a zombie has received intel that the boss is being held hostage inside a human city. The zombie king's subordinates ask what they should do, as he is their only support in the world. Every zombie wants to kill the human and save their king. The zombie in a coat says that if they are stupid, does the king need his help, but they can't stop them except for the king. On the battleship, everyone has received a direct order from the command center to catch Professor Jamie, regardless of the price. The zombie king has also arrived in an abandoned place, where he is greeted by the 56th regiment. The 56th Regiment reports for duty and greets their new and almighty leader, Vice President Zombie. 
They explained that they are part of the Central Command's 4th Division, the 56th Regiment, and from today onwards, they will be listening to the Zombie King's orders. There are 12,000 people in the 56th Regiment and they asked the Zombie King to confirm it. The Zombie King is speechless seeing his army. In the previous episode, the Zombie King was chosen as the Vice Captain of Beyonders Academy, and he was given command of the 56th Regiment, consisting of 12,000 army members who would only follow his orders. Continuing the story, the Zombie King decided to test the loyalty of one soldier. He asked the soldier if he would obey any command, even if it meant taking his own life. To the astonishment of the Zombie King and Dawn, the soldier pulled out a grenade and detonated it, despite the Zombie King's attempts to stop him. At that moment, someone stood on the tip of a tank, underestimating the Zombie King based on his appearance. Two men jumped down and confronted the Zombie King. They were from the Stainless Steel Academy, located next to Beyonders Academy, and had been sent to assist in capturing their target. Dawn was shocked to recognize them as President Bang and Vice President Choi, the heads of the Steel Blade Department. Meanwhile, on a battleship, Chief Gang of the Stainless Steel Academy questioned why he had been given orders to help with Beyonders Academy's internal affairs. While he didn't mind assisting others, he couldn't understand why the chief would promote a newcomer like the Zombie King to Vice President and assign him to such a crucial strategic position. The President explained that he was here to offer support and, as an outsider, he had no authority to question the chief's decision. The chief, in response to Chief Gang, claimed that the Zombie King had been selected because he could defeat him until he wets his pants. Chief Gang challenged the chief's bluff, reminding him that he was stronger. Meanwhile, in the enemy base, two men stood monitoring the situation on the monitors. One of them informed the head, Fei, that the army had arrived in the city and completely surrounded them. Fei ordered the release of the zombies, and with the press of a button, they were set free. On the screen, Fei noticed that some unique zombies had mixed in with his own. The president and vice president found it surprisingly easy to dispatch the zombies, finding no challenge at all. The Zombie King realized that these zombies didn't belong to his tribe, while Dawn pretended not to have heard anything. Seizing the opportunity, the President once again taunted the Zombie King, claiming that he was not needed and suggesting he go back to playing with children's toys since he was weak. Dawn defended the Zombie King, telling the President to shut up. However, she couldn't hide her fear, seeking solace behind the Zombie King. Suddenly, their attention was captured by the appearance of a new zombie, a member of the Zombie King's tribe, wielding a chainsaw. The Zombie King questioned Little Varmint, asking why he was there. Back at the enemy base, he laughed upon discovering that Varmint's stats were maximized, making him an extraordinary boss-level threat. Two hours earlier, Varmint had received the gasoline he had requested, while the little zombie claimed to have nothing to do with it, following the King's orders, and running away as quickly as possible. Varmint was shocked and expressed his desire to eliminate all humans by himself, as long as the King didn't find out. Suddenly, he detected a strange smell and sniffed which caused him to be infected with a zombie-controlling virus, turning him into a puppet. Returning to the present, Varmint began consuming the gasoline, leaving Dawn in shock. He then revved up his chainsaw, emitting a bone-chilling growl that shattered the windows of the building into countless pieces. The stage was set for an intense and suspenseful confrontation. The zombie king stood unaffected while others covered their ears or were blown away by the force of Varmint's roar. Varmint invited everyone to fight him, and President Bang eagerly accepted his offer. Meanwhile, the Zombie King grabbed Dawn and swiftly fled from the scene, explaining to her that they couldn't kill Varmint. Dawn questioned if it was some kind of joke, to which the Zombie King solemnly replied that Varmint possessed an undying body. As Zombie King and Dawn sought refuge on top of a building, President Bang considered Zombie King to be worthless for running away at the sight of a stronger enemy. Vice President Choi expressed his intention to handle the situation, but as he approached Varmint, he was sent flying and landed on the tank behind him. Before President Bang could turn to see Vice President Choi, Varmint appeared in front of him, taunting the president and asking him how he wanted to die. Witnessing this from their hiding spot, Zombie King and Dawn realized the gravity of the situation. The battle continued between President Bang and Varmint, while the enemy found the fight exhilarating, acknowledging Varmint's overwhelming strength. However, President Bang was taking a severe beating, pinned against the wall by Varmint. Varmint started his chainsaw, preparing to cut the president in half, but President Bang barely managed to block the attack. Meanwhile, Zombie King and Dawn observed the situation, realizing that President Bang might not be able to hold on much longer. President Bang started laughing claiming that he wouldn't lose with a serious expression, but suddenly began crying and shouting for his mother, not wanting to die. 
Don and Zombie King were left speechless, witnessing this unexpected turn of events. The soldier asked the Zombie King what they should do, and Don replied that they couldn't send ordinary soldiers either. The Zombie King was still pondering why Varman couldn't recognize him, so he decided to send Dawn to confront Varmint and try to knock some sense in him, much to her shock. She shouted at the Zombie King, wanted her to become Varmint's food. The Zombie King then bit Dawn's arm, surprising her. Dawn accused the Zombie King of taking advantage of the situation to control her mind, but he reassured her that he had no such intentions. He requested that she not unleash excessive force against Varmint. Meanwhile, President Bang pleaded with Varmint to spare him, admitting that he shouldn't have made fun of him. Varmint only laughed in response. Calling out to Varmint, Dawn referred to him as a little rat with a chainsaw. As Varmint turned to face her, she held a machine gun with a demonic smile, challenging him to play with her. Varmint arrogantly questioned who Dawn thought she was to challenge him, and she confidently replied that he wasn't anything special. She emptied her magazine, but to her surprise, Varmint skillfully dodged all the machine gun bullets. Meanwhile, President Bang lay on the ground, gripping his legs in shock, his confidence shattered. Vice President Choi had to intervene to rescue him from the battle scene. Don then leaped in front of Varmint and presented him with a little gift, two grenades pushed into his mouth, causing him to explode. However, much to everyone's surprise, Varmint emerged from the smoke unharmed, laughing and asking if she was trying to tickle him. He shrugged off a round of bullets to his face without any harm. Unable to harm him, Don became even more determined and excited, loading a shotgun this time. This shot managed to hurt Varmint, causing him some discomfort. On top of the building, the soldier asked the Zombie King what he had done. The Zombie King replied that he had made some modifications to Don's genes, making her more powerful. Don burst into laughter, expressing her enjoyment of this newfound strength, which further terrified President Bang and Vice President Choi. Varmint lunged at Dawn, pointing his chainsaw at her, but she blocked it with her legs and delivered a powerful kick, sending him flying and rolling on the ground. President Bang was shocked and asked Vice President Choi why Dawn had pretended to be weak when she was so powerful. He remarked that she was crazy. Dawn then revealed a bazooka and Varmint noticed a nearby container of gasoline, which he promptly drank. Both of them became even more excited, eager to continue their match, while President Bang and Vice President Choi grew increasingly fearful, exclaiming that these two were insane. Dawn unleashed her bazooka, but Varmint sliced it in half with his chainsaw. Varmint managed to cut Dawn in her stomach, causing her to bleed. He laughed triumphantly, proclaiming his invincibility as an undead, convinced that he couldn't be killed. However, Zombie King intervened by making a fist, and to everyone's astonishment, Dawn's wounds healed completely, restoring her to full health. Varmint was shocked by this sight, unable to comprehend what had just happened. With a sinister smile, Dawn responded to Varmint's claim of being undead, declaring, An undead, you say? I am also one. Her words sent shivers down the spines of both President Bang and Vice President Choi, who screamed in terror at the revelation and runs away from the scene asking someone to save them. In a state of shock, Varman questioned what was happening and who the real zombie was in this situation. Zombie King, observing from the top of the building, noticed that Dawn's bones were shattered and her muscles torn. He realized that he needed to bring this confrontation to an end swiftly. Filled with anger, Zombie King addressed Varmint, saying, Little Varmint, since you disobeyed my orders and didn't stay at home, don't blame me for disciplining you. However, to everyone's surprise, Dawn burst into laughter and suddenly appeared in front of Varmint, launching a relentless assault with her machine gun. She relentlessly pummeled Varmint, repeatedly striking his head until he collapsed to the ground, his skull crushed. Unable to withstand her onslaught, Varmint surrendered, pleading to be allowed to return home immediately. This left Zombie King and the enemy watching from the base speechless. Dawn lowered her guard and set her machine gun aside, allowing Varmint to launch a sneak attack, punching her in the face and shocking everyone present. Zombie King became furious, demanding to know why she had let her guard down. He explained that once she relaxed her vigilance, she would revert to her original state. Dawn responded that she didn't know, unaware of the consequences. Varmint became cocky upon realizing that Dawn had taken some stimulants, but their effects had worn off. He taunted her, advising her to be more careful in her next life and never to believe whatever a zombie says. The enemy grew excited, commenting on how Varmint not only possessed hidden abilities but also had an incredible sneak attack skill. Zombie King, frustrated by the turn of events, hit his head in disbelief, while Dawn and President Bang began shouting for help, seeking to be saved from Varmint's clutches. Now, Zombie King had no choice but to intervene personally. 
When Varman saw him, he trembled in fear. Zombie King called out his name, asking if he still remembered who he was, which left them all puzzled as to what he meant. In a flashback, Varmint was approached by a zombie who informed him that a gangster was causing trouble and wanted Varmint as his underling. This infuriated Varmint. When Zombie King appeared, Varmint mocked him, stating that he didn't look like a human or a zombie, appearing weak. Varmint questioned why he should become Zombie King's underling. As Zombie King approached Varmint, the latter trembled in even greater fear. Varmint recalled a past encounter with Zombie King, where Zombie King gripped his mouth tightly, demanding to know what was wrong. In response, Varmint apologized. Zombie King declared that he would show Varmint why he should follow him and exerted such force on Varmint's mouth that his eyes nearly popped out, leaving Varmint almost collapsing to the ground. In the present, Varmint was terrified at the sight of Zombie King standing before him. Despite the constant urging from the enemy to fight, proclaiming that he was undead, what the enemy didn't know was that Varmint remembered his past experiences. Due to his undying body, Varmint had been torn into shreds, turned into sashimi, and left to dry on a tree for over a hundred years. Varmint firmly refused the enemy's orders to attack, stating that he would never do so. Then, the control button held by the enemy suddenly exploded, and Varmint fled from Zombie King's presence, declaring that he wouldn't fight and that if he wanted a fight, he could face him himself. The enemy was left shocked by what had just transpired, as were Dawn, the President, the Vice President, and even Zombie King himself. The Four Eyes were unsure how Varmint had managed to break free from his control. No one had ever done so before, but Faye says to give up on that route, Faye says the army is about to come down. In the sky, a helicopter flew above the city, carrying the President and the Chief. The President inquired if Faye was present below, to which the spy on board confirmed his presence. The spy informed the president that Faye was located in a hidden base spanning six floors and an area of 11,000 square meters. Frustrated, the president questioned how long they would have to search for the location. The chief gang of the Stainless Steel Academy responded, stating that certain problems could be solved with absolute and overwhelming strength. He then leaped out of the helicopter, striking the ground with tremendous force, creating a massive explosion and revealing the hidden base beneath the city. The president scolded the chief, calling him a stupid musclehead and asking if men were incapable of using their brains occasionally. She expressed concern about the possibility of it being a trap. However, the chief of Beyonders Academy confidently replied that in the face of absolute power, all schemes were useless. He jumps from the helicopter himself and left the second line of defense to the president. Upon reaching the base, the army swiftly surrounded the premises and commenced their search for Fay and his subordinate. However, to their dismay, they found the entire building empty, indicating that their targets had managed to escape. Meanwhile, atop a nearby building, Four Eyes relayed the news to Faith that the army had entered the base. Faye wasted no time and instructed Four Eyes to proceed with Plan A. Chief Gang, a member of the Stainless Steel faction, was handed a mysterious blue tube, labeled with the words Zombie King inside. Intrigued, he opened it and read the message, contained within, there's a Zombie King inside, extremely dangerous. Open it if you dare, like a true man. Tempted to take the risk, the chief of the stainless steel faction ordered his men to detonate the tube. However, the chief of the Beyonders Academy intervened, advising against any further risks. With plan A failing to yield results, Faye shifted gears and initiated plan B by pressing a prominent red button. The button triggered a bomb within the tube, causing a powerful explosion. Faye's laughter resonated through the air as he proclaimed that this marked the beginning of humanity's end, heralding the rise of a new species. He eagerly invited the complete annihilation of human life, even his own. Inside the base, both chiefs observed as the smoke slowly dissipated, revealing the zombie king a childlike figure with a milk tube in his mouth. This shocking revelation left them speechless. The chief of the Beyonders Academy cautioned the other chief against hastily judging the zombie king, explaining that despite his seemingly weak and innocent appearance, he had faced similar situations countless times before. Driven by his impulse, the chief of the Stainless Steel faction launched an attack, slashing at the Zombie King. However, the agile Zombie King evaded the strike. The chief of the Beyonders Academy, foreseeing this outcome, swiftly ordered his soldiers to retreat. Undeterred, the chief of the Stainless Steel faction attempted another slash, successfully cutting the Zombie King in half. Yet, to their astonishment, the Zombie King split into two separate entities. Before their eyes, the two halves merged once again, reuniting into a singular, unified being. 
Now, with Plan B executed successfully, Farai's order his men to unleash a horde of zombies while they serve as a distraction for the president. Thousands of zombies flood the road, creating a menacing sight. Witnessing the impending zombie attack, the president with her striking blue hair decides to confront the horde single-handedly. Drawing her sword, she fearlessly charges toward the zombies, delivering powerful kicks that send them soaring through the air. With each strike, the road is cleared of the once congested mass of zombies. She then expertly maneuvers, using a bending tree to launch herself into the air, and swiftly decapitates any remaining zombies with her sword before gracefully landing on the ground. Her relentless determination turns every single zombie to dust. As she stands victorious, she warns her adversaries that if they believe they can escape through chaos, they had better think again. Observing this display of skill and courage, Farice seethes with anger, berating her as a foolish witch while lamenting the absence of the chainsaw-wielding zombie. Meanwhile, somewhere in the city, a group of zombies races through the road. Among them are two members of the esteemed Zombie King's tribe, diligently wearing masks to shield themselves from the infectious zombie virus. They halt one of the passing zombies to inquire about the whereabouts of the chainsaw-wielding individual. However, the zombie dismisses them rudely, flinging away the poster they had been showing. Clad in a black suit, one of the zombies expresses disdain for these impolite foreign zombies, while a muscular counterpart reveals his fear of the zombie king's punishment if they fail to find the chainsaw-wielding figure before their king does. In response, the zombie in the black suit confidently asserts that they will indeed locate the elusive varmint. Back at the base, the chief finds himself at a loss, unsure of what to do, while the taunting zombie continues to provoke him. Together, they launch a coordinated attack against the relentless undead creature, only to find their strikes futile. Even when they manage to inflict wounds, the zombie effortlessly splits into two and seamlessly rejoins its divided form. Growing increasingly frustrated, the chief challenges the zombie to face him as a true warrior. Surprisingly, the zombie takes the proposal to heart and retrieves a milk tube, initiating a startling transformation that unveils her true form, a fearsome female zombie queen. Both chiefs stand in shocked disbelief, unable to comprehend the source. In her noble form, the zombie queen gestures for them to come and play with her. Stainless Steel's chief, fueled by determination, declares his intention to shred her to pieces and launches a ferocious attack. However, with a mere flick of her finger, she effortlessly halts his assault. Desperate for aid, he implores Beyonder's chief to join the battle. Motivated to defend his comrade, Beyonder's chief reveals his true form, only to be swiftly met with a powerful kick to the face, sending him hurtling through the air. The impact resonates with a thunderous boom, catching the attention of two zombies from the Zombie King's tribe. The muscular zombie contemplates whether they should assist the injured human, while the zombie in the black suit dryly remarks on the perplexing state of the chief's head, reminding his companion that they too are zombies. Now, it is the turn of the battered stainless steel chief, who crashlands in front of the president and her entourage, leaving them bewildered by the unfolding chaos below. Despite his weakened state, the chief manages to convey the presence of a zombie threat, and their gaze turns upward to spot the zombie queen perched atop a bridge, yawning nonchalantly. Meanwhile, on the other side of the city, the aroma of sizzling chicken wings fills the air as the president, vice president, Dawn, and the zombie king enjoy a moment of respite. President Bang kindly offers the zombie king some tea, to which he casually remarks that it tastes a bit dry. President Bang promptly orders the army to summon an aircraft and have the finest tea delivered immediately. As they relish their meal, the sound of the zombie queen catches the attention of both the zombie king and Dawn. Aware that this adversary possesses an unfamiliar aura, the president and her companions decide it is time to unite and prepare to face this formidable foe. Meanwhile, the zombie king senses that something is amiss, prompting him to rise from his seat and declare his intent to confront the situation alone. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.